So I've been thinking a lot lately that given multiple reasons, COVID slash isolation, the Canadian heat that I'm suffering in, and virtual meetings that have now become a huge need for work, I've needed to put on a minimal amount of makeup to make myself look natural and ordinary. So I wanted to share what I do so that others can take some of the tips that I use. I have a couple fun new products that I just ordered, so I'll be trying those out for the first time and a few that I've used before. So let's get started. The main difference from those who have alopecia universalis as I do are of course our lack of hair but when it comes to our facial difference we don't have eyebrows or eyelashes and that's the most noticeable. When you don't have eyebrows or eyelashes it just looks very one tone. So that's the one thing that I do like to add when I'm going for a no makeup look to look more natural. So that's what I'm going to start with. I'm going to be using an eyebrow tattoo. These are just temporary tattoos. The size I'm going with is E15 and I got these on Amazon. If you would like to see a full review, I have another video where I use these for the first time and tried them out. So I'll show you a few more tricks that I've learned over the last few months from using these compared to the video I originally posted. So to start off using them, it's the same. I peel back the plastic part and place them right where I want my eyebrows to be. Because I've wiped off any excess residue with alcohol, it sticks to my skin. Just like that. I'll take a cotton round in water and starting from the outer edge, wetting the tattoo brow. Firmly pressing it to the skin. I'll saturate it in water multiple times throughout this process. Now while I'm letting those relax off the paper, I'm going to do my eyes a little bit. I've already done primer, but I'm going to start off with doing a bit of eyeshadow to add in texture for different things to stick to. I have a brand new eyeshadow palette that I'm going to try out. This is the Charlotte Tilbury. Tilbury? Tilbury maybe? I'm pretty sure that's the name. Charlotte, why does it, oh, it's Charlotte Tilbury. This is the Charlotte Tilbury mini makeup palette. It's called the, the Easy Eye Palette or Charlotte Darling Look. It's my first time using it. It's a mini makeup palette, so I find it really easy to have. And it comes with two different looks from a lighter highlight to a nice taupe. I really just want to get a base, and I'm going to go in with this number two shade. The first number two because there's two number twos. Just this shade here. Flat brush. I find having a little bit of shimmer on the eyes helps, but not too much. So I wanna go for one that is at least close to my skin tone. Do that all over the lid and blend it out over the eyelid. Just a bit of difference. And I'll come back to this palette. I'm gonna add more water to my eyebrows. I'm also going to add a little bit of eyeliner to my waterline just to darken that up a bit. I'm using a Makeup Forever waterproof black eyeliner. I'm going to really angle the mirror down so I can see straight up and not poke myself right in the eye. See the difference? Gives more definition to the eyes. I'm now gonna use a smudging brush and like the brush applies, smudge the eyeliner. What I find is most important about the eyeliner is that it's waterproof. When it's right on your waterline, you wanna make sure that it's not gonna wipe off or lose its opacity during the day. Also, having the base shadow on your eye helps with the smudging because then it has something to blend into and it's not sticking to the oils of your eye. Let's do one more saturation just to make sure that the eyebrows are fully removed from the paper. That should be a good enough time. Let's see about this one. No! I really want to make sure these come off cleanly. It does help with lasting a bit longer. Bleh. I know what it is. Cool. I have another dry cotton round here and I'm just patting off any excess water. Get them nice and dry. I find I put them really close together and they still look very far apart. Oh, I didn't mean to give you the finger. But that's okay because they look more natural. They don't look like you've placed them there. It's where your eyebrows are supposed to be or they will be today. 
One trick that I did discover that helps them stay on for longer is using a setting spray. I'm gonna use a drugstore brand. This is the Maybelline. Because I only need this look for a few hours, I'll use this setting powder. But if I want it to last much longer, hours, several days, I would recommend using the Urban Decay setting powder. Shake it up and spray it on. The setting spray will also help to keep the eyeliner and the base shadow on. Now, I know I said this was a no makeup look and I'm trying to use only a bit of makeup here and there. So I am gonna put on a bit of concealer. I have the It Cosmetics Bye Bye Breakout Concealer and I find this just works well for this area of my face to even it out. But I won't use this every single time. It really just depends on how I'm feeling that day. If I'm having a lot of breakouts, rosacea, uneven skin tones, whatever the case may be. Today I am going to use just a little bit and it has a super cute don't fall for it that's the main area I want to use it in I have the Morphe beauty sponge blending it in. I find the difference in using sponge compared to a brush is this blends out a lot better and I get more of my skin resonating from underneath the product. With my skin evened out I think I'll just put in a little bit of powder on top if I could find one. To add glow to my skin I'm going to put on the Hourglass Ambient Light Powder. I've had this for a while. I love this product. This is a step that you can skip if you're looking for a true no makeup look. Maybe I should call this a almost no makeup makeup look. Now that we have eyebrows and a waterline, the last thing I'm gonna go in with is eyelashes. This is a bit of a difficult step, so take your time. I've only done this a handful of times, so I'm still learning, but I really do find it makes a difference from when you're trying to go from alopecia to more of an ordinary natural look. The eyelashes that I'm going to try out for the first time are these Anastasia. Anastasia? 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 Anastasia Beverly Hills. And I have the shape Eleganza. Wow, am I RuPaul? Eleganza Extravaganza! And I do apply them with a dark glue. This is just the duo brush on adhesive dark shade glue. I also like to use, it looks like an eyeliner tip applicator. There's two versions. Now that I finally got them out of the box, I have these super tiny, itty bitty little tweezers. Do they look normal size? Um, to put on the eyelashes with. I know that there's specific eyelash tweezers that you can use. I don't have those. I have this and they're so cute. Since these are brand new, I do have to measure them to my eye, meaning I have to make sure that there's not too much on either end because then it'll poke into your eye and it is not fun. These ones actually don't look like they have to be trimmed. Yeah. Okay, I don't think I actually have to trim these. Crossing fingers. I take the piece of glue. And interestingly enough, when you don't have eyelashes to support big eyelashes from underneath, I have to apply them like they're flexing back. The glue is gonna go on the top part of the lash. So it's actually gonna go on this part. right on top. Trust me, I've done this a handful of times. Let it dry for a little bit. So as if it's almost flexing backwards, I'm going to apply it to my eyes, angling my mirror down. Oh yeah, with my itty bitty tweezers. This just helps with getting it nice and close. Then twisting it upwards so that it's almost covering your eyelid. One note about eyelashes when you have alopecia is, once again, because you don't have the lashes growing out of your eyelid, make sure to place the lash on your eyelid and not your waterline. It's really hard to tell the difference. You'll learn over time, but I did that where I glued the lash to my waterline, which is way too close, and it just is, it's really uncomfortable. Having the black liner is how it's gonna blend in the lash to look more natural. And I'm almost gonna let it dry, sticking right up like this, so that it's not drooping in my eyesight over the day. All right, I'm gonna quickly put the other one on. These are a little bit bigger thing than what I would normally want to go with for a natural look, but it goes from looking like alopecia to more ordinary or natural. One thing I just like to do is just highlight my brow a little bit, and like I promised, I'm going back in with that Charlotte Tilbury palette. I'm gonna go in with this highlight shade with some sort of brush, itty bitty flat brush, and just 
highlight the brow. And that's it, I promise. I'm not going in with any other makeup. This is it. Ooh, look at that highlight. Look at that highlight. And I'm just gonna blend it out a bit. I don't even know if I could call this a no makeup. It's all makeup, technically. Are lashes considered makeup? What's your opinion? Because technically then, I can never do a no makeup makeup look. I'm just gonna always have makeup on. But I am liking these lashes. The thing I will add is lip balm. Something more natural once again. And what I'm gonna use today is It Cosmetics Je Ne Sais Quoi. It is a moisturizing lip tint. So it doesn't add any extra color. It just enhances the color that you already have. And it has this nice magnetic lid. Hold on. So I think it's fun. This would be my alopecia and no makeup look just to add in what would make me look a little bit more natural and ordinary if that's what you're going for. It's just eyebrows and eyelashes and then I've added in a few tips here and there for how you can make them look and seamlessly blend in with your face. To tie it all in, I'm gonna put on my wig. This is Veronica, freshly washed. She is a glue wig, meaning you have to use some sort of adhesive, whether it's a daily styling glue or ghost bond glue to keep it on. So a trick that I use is my glasses. If I tuck it strategically on this sideburn, it'll kind of keep the wig on. Um, she's freshly washed, and if you want to see how I wash my human hair wigs, I'll link the video. This is the final look. So that's really it. Thank you for watching, and I hope you have a beautiful day. Bye. Thank you.